Hello, everyone. This is Renee with Ingram Spark, and I'd like to thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Crowdfunding 101 for Authors, How to Fund Your Book, featuring Judith Bryles and our very own Robin Cutler. Before I hand you over to our co-hosts, I want to address some housekeeping items. First off, we will be live tweeting this event, and we would love if you would join in the conversation. You can do this by using the widget on the right side of your screen. If you have questions at any time during the presentation, please use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We have Ingram Spark team members here eager to help, so please take advantage of that. But for all questions specific to Judith, we will have a 10-minute Q&A session at the end of the webinar, so ask away as they come to you and we'll pose your questions to our co-hosts at the end. Any questions that we don't get to within that time frame, we will have Judith or Robin answer and we'll post them in the comments section on our YouTube channel where the webinar will be hosted after. There are printable handouts in the resource list at the bottom left of your screen, which Judith has provided to help you understand the mechanics of crowdfunding and to help you prepare for your crowdfunding game plan. So take advantage of those as well. And keep in mind that we hold a webinar every month. You'll find the info on the upcoming webinar in our monthly e-newsletter and on our social media channels, Facebook and Twitter, where we'll announce when the next one will be. They will be on a various topics, so be sure to join us monthly. But that's all I've got, so without further ado, I'm happy to introduce the director of Ingram Spark, Robin Cutler. Robin has broad knowledge on indie, academic, and trade publishing and is an expert in content creation and distribution, on-demand models, marketing, and author strategies. Robin's a leader in the independent publishing space, and when not developing new programs and services for Ingram Spark, she can often be found sharing her expertise at industry events around the world. So thank you for being here, Robin. Over to you. Thank you so much, Renee, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we have just a special treat today in welcoming my guest, Dr. Judith Bryles. Uh, Judith and I have known each other for a few years now. She is a well-known author, speaker, uh, radio host, and, and an author, especially an indie author advocate. Judith is the award-winning and best-selling author of 35 books. This woman never sleeps, I assure you, uh, including Author You, uh, Sappy, Sassy, Salty, Wise Words for Authors and Publishers, and uh, particularly important for this uh, topic today, the crowdfunding guide for authors and writers. To date, her books have been translated into 16 languages with over 1 million copies sold. That's amazing, Judith. Uh, she's been featured um, on various television and radio shows, including CNN, CNBC, and Oprah, as well as being featured in Newsweek, People, Time, The Wall Street Journal, and The National Enquirer. Uh, I especially love the work that she's done in founding uh, an organization called Author U, that's A-U-T-H-O-R-U dot org, a membership organization of authors and publishers that's based in Colorado. Uh, and she does a lot of uh, great uh, programming education along with that organization. She uh, hosts a, a year annual um, publishing uh, conference that's called uh, Extravaganza U. Is that it, Judith? Uh, that's I'll, I'll, coming up this next, uh, next September. Uh, what is it? Author You Extravaganza. And that will be in this upcoming September, is that right? Correct, the 15th through the 17th, and the website will go live next week with all the players. Oh, we'll definitely have to uh, include that in the Ingram Spark newsletter. That is a fantastic conference. I've, I've spoken at it uh, for the last few years and uh, one of the best ones all the way around. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, turn this over to Judith. I'm going to try to stay quiet uh, here. Judith has a full uh, presentation here and just phenomenal uh, education that she's going to share with you today. Well, thank you, Robin. And, of course, you if you have questions, jump in. But this is all really about book or bust. And the book or bust could be actually the production of your book, it could be the publicity round for your book. It could be marketing strategies. It could be maybe you need to fund your entire research of what you're doing if you need something along that line. There's just so much you can do 
about your book when it comes to crowdfunding, which makes it very exciting. So what we're going to be doing is going through some of these tips for funding your book project using OPM, and OPM is other people's money. And I wanted to just <laughs> share with everyone just a, a quick uh, just some study of just some areas. This is this is a chart for, really from Kickstarter of a variety of areas that funding comes from. But if you'll notice the third one from the bottom, which is publishing, that when they first really started paying attention to their stats and numbers a few years ago, there was only 5,600 projects that were launched and 1,666 were successful, raising $15 million. Now, it's higher today, but roughly what you need to understand is as you go through these, is there is a factor that you're shooting for, and you, your viewer, want to be in the 29% minority of the total raised um, through, and I just I pulled these numbers because we have to turn our slides in a little early, but of the total numbers raised through uh, mid-last week, that there was over $2.3 billion, that's a lot of money, and through May, $78 million has been pledged, uh, pledged to publishing through Kickstarter with over 31,000 campaigns and total backers of $10.8 million. And, uh, and here's an interesting stat you need to understand, that once people pledge that they get into a platform uh, routine on that, whether you use Indiegogo or something like Publicizer, which these are the top three, and I'll mention these on the next slide. But there are repeats, people that just come back and they're voyeurs. Oh, what's new? What's exciting? And getting on. And roughly a third of them don't pledge just one. They come back and look for more stuff. So if you're going to be doing this again, you want to find, you know, you, you kind of get a home. And maybe your name, your voice, your, your project strategy, your style uh, becomes known within a group. And they come back and they become what we call super fans. And that's very exciting. And that's a whole other webinar we can do, Robin. All right, so here are the big three. Kickstarter certainly is the um, godfather in the group. Indiegogo and Kickstarter is what we call an, a year and all or nothing. So if you decide to do a Kickstarter program, of which the average Kickstarter program is 5000 uh, money is trying to be raised, that you better, by golly, raise $5,000 or you get not a nickel of it. Indiegogo is flexible, meaning you can be a fix saying, I'm going to shoot for $5,000, um, or I'd be flexible, and, you know, if I get 3482 by God, I'll take that one. And Publicizer is, and, and let me say that Indiegogo will take any kind of project. It, it doesn't have to be literary. Uh, it, Kickstarter will take any kind of project. But Publicizer is literary, and it is flexible, all right? So it, it, anything in the literature reign, it will stay in that arena on that. Now, in looking at creating a project, you kind of have this little mission and goal. One is to raise money to support your book project, whatever it may be, to really at the same time, because you're going to be gathering names, grow your crowd, create your fan base, to brand. This is very important, who and what your book and journey is all about. And then you start creating a series of how you communicate with your network, and to be successful, this is the bottom line. You've got to be focused, dedicated, and really myopic. I mean, I truly mean this. Myopic is the operative word. So in doing that, you get clear. And when you get clear about who your market is, and this is where I'm saying is who are you writing to, who are, who are you reaching out, what kind of pain are you resolving of someone, or entertainment you're bringing to someone, you, and remember this, you're, not everyone's going to love you. You're not a fit for everyone. And once you grasp that, you're just so ahead of the game. So as you start to evolve and dream where you are and where you want to go, start thinking clearly, clearly, concisely about your book. What's the story? What's unique about you as the author and your book and what it brings? What's the emotional hook? What's the lure you're going to bring people in to seduce them to support your project. What's the value that you bring along to it? And then what are the benefits to the reader? If it's nonfiction, what's the pain you're going to ooze and take away? What solutions and answers are you going to deliver? For our fiction readers, our authors here, 
is that you also deliver pain relief. It's called entertainment. So what entertainment value is it going to bring? And that's really where that genre is so critical and who you're, you're writing to um, in that area. And one of my keepers here is book success is not about depth or belly button grazing. It's about marketing to what the reader wants or needs an answer to. And, and one other little goody gem I'll bring in, it, it's not money that makes the world go round. It's problems. So if you can solve someone's problem, you are, you've got a home run here as we move into this. So as you look at that problem solving, start asking yourself, who really is your reader? And I know Robin and I have grilled this in to authors we work worked <laughs> with when they ask them. Isn't that the truth, Robin? Yes, it is absolutely the truth, all of this. Oh, it, it's, it's like, so who is your reader? Oh, it's everyone. Oh, gag me. It is not everyone. <laughs> yeah. Not everyone. Yeah. And my, my keeper here is the more you niche yourself, the bigger your market is. The more you narrow it, you become the star within it. It's so much easier to be the whale in the pond versus the sardine in the sea. Don't forget that. So what problem does your book address? Really, what does it address? And if, if for you, my nonfiction people, what's the number one takeaway they need from your book? And then answer, why are you the source? Why are you the expert? for what you write and share, and that's for both fiction and nonfiction. And in my fiction people, you are experts. It could be in location, in genre, in how-to. I mean, all, think back to 9-11. Who was all over CNN and every other news channel? A fiction author by the name of Tom, Can Tom Clancy. He was an expert, as perceived by the media, in all things related to terrorism. And then lastly... You have to be willing to work your tush off. And, Robin, I know you probably have some comments here because you see a lot of really good books and then the authors just kind of let them limp along. Isn't that the truth? Yes. I, I think this list, if you're not even crowdfunding, this, this list is important for you to even understand, like, why you're doing what you're doing. I mean, I think this really goes to the heart of uh, identifying why, you know, you are spending so many hours alone sitting at your desk. Uh, and it helps to really have have a focus into why you're doing that. Um, and then, you know, to me, the successful authors, the ones that uh, are, differentiate themselves in terms of sales, invariably are the ones that just leave no stone unturned. They they know what they're doing. If they don't know what they're doing, they're uh, working with experts such as um, someone like Judith to help them figure it out. And they uh, just never stop marketing the book. They never stop thinking about you know who who are uh, another reader for their book. Um, and you're exactly right here, Judith. Mm, I mean, it's it's really imperative to understand this. All right, so some of the mechanics of it is these are the component of what you're going to need to put your program, your campaign together. You've got to have a vision, and that ties in with your passion. You've got to be committed to it. You've got to have that story. A video is essential, and the, actually the shorter the better. And if it can be quirky, have a little fun thing to it. It can be dead serious, by the way. But people like quirky and funny. Never, never bypass that one if you can. Your rewards, your perks are very important, and make sure that they tie into uh, what your book's about, and I'm going to come back to that. You want to make sure that you're, you have a call to action. You do that on your video, and you also do that in your written uh, context on your landing page on the platform you use. And you've got to have the G-O-Y-T, and that's get off your tush factor to make this successful. <laughs> And I'm a believe believer in that. <laughs> right, now here's, here's four questions you need to ask. One, is my project worth it? I mean, if someone pitched your project to you, would you invest in it without knowing them? Really ask that. Two, are my rewards alluring? Do they look good? Do they sound fine? Is my book concept compelling? Does it, it, does it have that emotional hook 
um, emotional lure. And, you know, I don't have a slide on this, but let me just give a website for all of you to kind of do a checkpoint on that. If you go to the AM, that's Apple Mary, aminstitute.com, aminstitute.com, if you click on their headline analyzer, you will can find out by doing some testing with your keywords and your title, variations in that, you can find out if it has an emotional, an intellectual, and uh, a spiritual pull to it. Very important to know that when you're throwing out your line. Think of yourself as a fisherman, fisherwoman, and you throw out that line and you start reeling it in, reeling it in slowly, slowly. Are you going to hook them and then net them? And then lastly, do you think my project will fund itself? Boy, if you think you do, you're in, you're in la-la land. <laughs> so we need to get you off that one very quickly because it's, this takes work. This is not a uh, passive uh, bypass stand you're going to do. Now, there are four ways to crowdfund a project, donation, pre-sales, pre-launch, loan, and equity. I am going to focus on, which is this, this is a typical one that you will be looking at, which is donation. And here's the pros of it. It, make, it makes the person who's participating and pledging money, and this is a pledge to you, feel good. Now, if you're a nonprofit, it, there's a tax write-off on that. And, uh, and I will, let me just do a little asterisk here. If you're going through Kickstarter and you're a nonprofit, there's a causation to it. You've got a cause. They won't fund you. They won't carry you. So you need to go to the other two to look at. Cons, your money could go down the drain. Maybe the author doesn't produce it. Maybe something gets in the way. Um, there's maybes. And what it's best for is people who just like to give, who want to support the ventures of their family and friends. Now, people always say, but how oh, do I have to declare it? You know, on Uncle Sam, yes, you do. Get over that. <laughs> but look, you're going to be spending money. you got design coming in or you've got expenses, any kind of expenses coming in. What, whether you're raising 3000 4000 12000 fill in the blank thousands, that, that money is going to go out the door. So just don't worry about that. You're going to declare it as income, and then you're going to have a P&L and hopefully a good bookkeeper and accountant who can make sure that you dot all your I's and cross your T's. Now, here are the players. We've mentioned them earlier. One is Kickstarter. It is a fixed area. There is no other exceptions, and here's your cost. It's 10%. 5% goes to Kickstarter, and 5% goes to Stripe. Stripe is the credit card handling for the pledges that come in that once the, the project is successful, then the credit cards get charged. Indiegogo will take any type of project. It, you can choose fixed or flexible. Now, you'll see two numbers on the cost, 4% if it's fixed and Amazon is 3% charge, or flexible is 9% plus 3%. So if you don't meet your that, that ultimate goal, there is a little penalty and they charge more for it. And then publicizer is flexible. So uh, that means if, you, if you're trying to raise $10,000, and by the way, people like me like to use ones and O's because they're so easy to multiply, uh, that the cost is 5%, and PayPal, they, everything is processed through PayPal, is 3%. So the total cost, if looking at Kickstarter, is going to be 10%. For Indiegogo, it can be anywhere from 7% to 12%. And, of course, these numbers can change tomorrow um, from, from the underwriters. Or with Publicizer, it is 8%. But now, why do you need to know that? Because when you do your budget, if you're saying, I really need $10,000, you don't need $10,000. You need at least $11,000 because you mm -hmm. have a cost running this. Plus, plus, when we get into the rewards, you have the cost of your rewards. So here's the, the idea on budgeting is that I would add on to whatever you're trying to raise 20%. That way, you cover your costs and any other goodies that you have to, to underwrite to get out to all your supporters because you've, you've offered them things in the process. Any, any input on this, Robin, as I go through here? 
No, I I, uh, I had never heard of Indiegogo before. Is that uh, an Amazon business? No. Oh, no, no. Indiegogo is a standalone platform. It's very big um, on that, and you can raise it from. You know, you may you want to you may want to develop a dog kennel, and you could build you could raise money through Indiegogo for that. Okay. Um, so it anything and everything, but Kickstarter is the gorilla. Uh, Indiegogo is fairly large. Publicizer is is fairly it's newish in the game but it's it's got some strength behind it and what's interesting about publicizer it has a higher percentage rate of success than kickstarter mm-hmm. all right especially for so, publishing projects right just for publishing literary literary related projects mm-hmm. you, you could get in trading manuals you should get it you could get in game boards you can get in some things that might tie into a book for example on that so what I would recommend to everybody um, is let me let me hop back to this one slide here. Well, I, I don't know how to do that. Let me see here. Oh, let me go back to this guy. Um, that if you're looking at any of these here, is that I would suggest you go to their home pages and look at some of their tutorials and you start getting educated on that. That would be the smart thing mm-hmm. to do. And of course, I'm going to recommend you get my book, the crowdfunding guide for authors and writers. Um, and you can get that through Ingram Spark, which would be the, you know, the smart thing to do. All right, so here we go. You can go through. Now, I gave you all this. This is something that we do at our annual event, the Judith Browse un, uh, Book Publishing Unplugged event, which actually is going to be in June in Denver, um, and that I'll talk about that at the end. But this is a map that I make everybody do to figure out. And it, it just, you have this. This is for you to print out and take away and just start writing down your key nuggets, what's your content and story, so you can start developing, putting together your platform and your program. Who are all your family and friends that you're going to hit up? And I'm telling you, you got to hit them up. And, and I'll tell you why in a few minutes. But why are you the pro here? Who are your JV partners? Or who are the people who are going to shut out, like uh, someone like me, if I've got a client who's going through a crowdfunding program, and there is, I, we have a picture of Ashley uh, uh, Bratton, who is going to come up here shortly, that we were within 72 hours only 60% of the goal, and I will tell you that's a failure. And I got in behind all my contacts, because I have over 68,000 on Twitter, uh, between my two channels and all my other channels, and we started pounding, 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 pounding away. At 6 a.m. on the last day, I woke her up, and I said, have you looked at the computer? And she said, uh, no, I'm afraid to. I said, well, go you know, go open it up. I'm going to get a cup of tea, and let's just talk. And, of course, she had overfunded. So that's what a good joint venture partner. So start thinking of people who have huge social media uh, contact and will promote and push you. They are your little ace of the hole when things are not, you know, maybe not going so well. Um, and then how are you going to communicate? Uh, what you're going to put on your video? What kind of rewards? Uh, how are you going to push out on to build your SEO, your social, um, uh, your optimization here? How are you going to use your money? It's very critical, by the way, on that video and to write up how you're going to use this money. Any images, people love images, and then what resources that will help you put this together. All critical to know. So a game plan, starting to put it together, will really move you fast. So we're going to go through several quick steps here now. One, what's your theme? It's fun to have a theme with colors and images. Use them on your platform, on the page, on your crowdfunding site. You want that a video? Um, for those of you who are doing fiction, hey, get, you know, talk in one of your characters. Do you have any activities? Uh, what kind of timing are you looking for? And then that problem, that solution. That's number one, noodle a theme and project. Number two is, oh, yeah, the money part. All right, so how much money do we need? What's the cost? You want to compare your options. What kind of release date are you going for? Um, and, if, you know, you may be raising money for a big launch, you know, so what kind of venue are you going to have? Again, are you going to be getting any of the, the, the gifts and rewards? What's your cost factor? Is there anything else? And, and by the way, part of your budget, maybe you're going to have to pay someone to put this baby together for you. 
not everyone works for free. So what's that in there? All parts of the budget. Number three is, uh, well, let me just add this, location um, on what you use. This is your site you're using. You are, don't, please don't go away. You're going to be monitoring it. You're going to push updates. Um, and your only real cost for this part is your time, your energy, and certainly having a, a, some type of a laptop or tablet that you can instantly put things out to because you can communicate with those that are there. And there are times you're going to have to go back to them and maybe get a little bit more help. Number three, pick a month. What works best for you? That's always good. But also, go down to the very last bullet here, you know, that December strategy. A lot of people will stay away from the month of December, and I'm going to tell you, maybe not, because people are actually generous in December, and they might be just, instead of giving you $25, you know, they might say, you know, I'm going to give her $100. That sounds pretty good to me. So figure out what month is best for you. Um, and also, if your donors, if you have a certain group, it could be family and friends because they're instrumental in your success. If they're, they're all gone the month of August, it's probably not a good idea to launch this out in August. You want to make sure that you give yourself ample lead time during this process to make this work. And, and, and I have to say this, don't do an RTP. Don't do a rush to push here. You want to make sure that you've got all your ducks lined up before you say, okay, I'm ready to go, because you're not going to be able to go back and redo this thing over. Number four, everywhere you go, this is part of your pre, pre-doing, pre everywhere you go, gather names and emails, critical. So have sign-in sheets, you want to follow up, let people know, have a guest book, have a bowl to gather cards. You just need to know to let people know uh, when it's ready to go, because it's a go, go, go time, and you want their involvement. Building your crowds. Number five, family, friends at the top of the list, and then friends of friends. How about your peers, your colleagues, your coworkers? If you're in any meetup groups, any social-related groups, any church groups, any, any groups, gather names, let people know, be enthusiastic so they can enjoy your enthusiasm. And this is the time that social media is really critical. And if you haven't got it by now, that you need to get that social media is the Internet for all marketing today. Now, there's nothing, you know, I'm all for face-to-face, huge face-to-face. But for launching things out, as you move this forward, social media is a critical component. Start building which platforms are appropriate for you to do. And also, as I said, that that in uh, the data that showed on Kickstarter that one-third of the people come back and buy other people from other platforms because they, they are voyeurs. They shop in, and it's like the shop. It's, it's instead of the home shopping network on TV, this is the laptop shopping network. And they are out looking for things to do, um, and they just like to do it. So it's the host platform followers. In other words, It's everywhere. Start building your crowd. And then there's two critical elements, and I've already inferred them. These are your family and friends and your social media. One-third, hear me clearly, one-third of your supporters are going to come from family and friends. So grandma, auntie, uncle, your cousin George, your, 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 your sister Sue, I don't care who, you're reaching out and you're going to ask for their support. And the same going out to friends. And you want them to pledge within the first four or five days. And why is that? And, and, and how long should your campaign be? Never over 40 days. 30 is better. You want them to pledge in those first four to five days because here's what the looky-loos and the voyeurs are doing. They're saying, okay, who's getting traction? Well, that looks interesting. Oh, people are already putting money into the pot. Maybe I will come along. And, and you know, that's just really critical to understand. I mean, if you've got someone who's trying to raise several thousand dollars and there's $122, 
is that going to attract you? Is that going to be the lure? Because what you're going to probably mentally say is, oh, this, this isn't doing so well. This, this is probably not very good. Versus something that is really moving up and building money. Oh, other people are talking about it. Does that make sense to you, Robin? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Absolutely. So that, and, that's uh, going to... Let me ask you this, Judith. So... Um, you know, whatever platform you go on to do your campaign, are you letting your family and friends know about this outside of them being communicated with through the campaign, or how does that happen? Oh, great question. And you let them know, and you give them all the links. I mean, you're going to be you're going to be creating one of your strategies is this is where social media is that wherever you're hanging out, that, we, that is one thing. But if you've got other people who are going to be shouting out for you, like I aggressively work through Twitter, um, you, I want you to create sample tweets using hashtags, and it's going to have a shortener, shortener in it, and link directly to the platform page that you're going to start putting together. You're going to make some Facebook postings. You're going to make some LinkedIn postings. And you're going to share those with your family and friends so they can shout out to everybody they know. Think of it as a game. You know, the more you can get, the better. And you could even mm-hmm. make a con- the contest. The more people you refer into, you're going to get, you know, a weekend with me. Well, maybe. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe come, a weekend to come pick my brain. And, you know, that could be a prize. That that if if I was doing my own cam, uh, crowdfunding campaign because I do several different things, but one of them is my pick my brain that you could come in and spend a whole day with me and if by gosh if you're going to do that I'm telling you it will have a multi thousand dollar price on it if you want to buy that if you want to have eight hours of my uninterrupted time that you're going to pay probably $3,500 for that. And I will feed you. Mm-hmm. I will feed you, but you mm-hmm. will do that. All right, so, mm-hmm. and, and for those of you who are listening in who have an expertise, you know, that kind of an expertise that comes up that, or, or, or something that you can offer as one of the prizes, by golly, you should do it. For example, my event, my Judith Browse Book Publishing Unplug event, which has like a $500 price tag on it, I may offer four for tickets of that for, let's say, for everyone who pledges $300 or more, you know, something like that. So you give them a little discount so they feel like, oh, yeah, I got a deal, and by God, I'm going to do this. So there's that's where brainstorming with someone who has done that, and certainly in our book that we did, The Crowdfunding Guide for Authors and Writers, we suggest some of those strategies. And we actually have three campaigns and walked you through those in, in the book. So the critical elements, family, friends, social media. Next up is that you've got to think about, okay, how are you going to push this baby out? So you got to have to have a quick pitch. You want to understand the value of the hashtag power. So for, for me, my book is crowdfunding, so I would maybe use hashtag crowdfund or hashtag crowdfunding. I have a brand-new book that's popping, gosh, next week on how to avoid 101 book publishing blunders, bloopers, and boo-boos. So I might put hashtag mistakes because that's really what it is, hashtag author mistakes and put it all together. Um, So understand the power of hashtags. ID what you control because you can control the words you say, the tweets you put out. You can't, you know, what can't you control? You can't control if people don't reshare it. All right, you can't control if you put it up on Facebook and then Facebook decides to share it with only 12 people. That's a challenge. So that means you're going to have to put some ad power into it, means you have to buy it, means I have to put it in my budget. ID what you can track, know where your crowd is. This is back to the who, and ID your resources for video and JVs. If you need, you know, you could even do your video on your iPhone. Be fine with me on your, you know, your Android. I don't care. You could do your video on your you that. You could have someone shoot one for you. You could pay for it. I don't think you need to pay for it. But you can, you know, you need to have a, a video done. And this is so important in everything. If, if anything Rob and I have learned in this book publishing business, you're not going to go forward unless you ask for it. Isn't that true, Robin? 
Well, that's exactly true. So you ask, buy my book. Ask, please support <laughs> my my campaign. Ask for people to repost your things. Ask for retweets. Ask, ask, ask. You have your handout. So, and and that's what we're doing here. All right now, number six is creating the buzz. You got to create the buzz. So this is the promo, promo, promo. You know, people say, well, how long do I have to market my books? Well, how long do you want to sell the thing, right? That's <laughs> how long you're going to be promoting and marketing. So you got to promote your campaign. you got to tell everyone what you're doing, everyone, everywhere. Even write a press release and put it out. Now, is the paper going to pick it up? Probably not, but you can do it. And, you know, you never know where it's going to go on the Internet. All your social media contacts, all your advocate marketers, your joint ventures, and even create flyers everywhere you show up. Create a flower. Show show an image from your campaign page. Give a link. Go to a resource like bit.ly, B-I-T-L-Y dot com, or, or tinyurl dot com, and create a customized shortener to your link page, and and really take advantage of that kind of thing. And then, we, I've talked about these joint venture people, so who's on your team? And remember, you're the star. You are the star here, so congratulations. But this is not a solo act. So you got to reach out, and you ask them, who do you know who has connections that might support me? So it's the giant ask. It's always in play. It's there. And then, number seven you got to ID these rewards and gifts. This is so critical in and, and putting this little baby together. So, it, and, and yes, are you going to do the hearty thank you for 10 bucks? Yeah, you're going to do. I'm going to do hearty thank you. I might even send you a postcard. Uh, maybe for $25, $35, you get the ebook. Um, maybe that you send them for everybody who puts in 25 or 35 bucks or 40 bucks, you can give them a Starbucks $10 card. Um, that if you start moving over 50, a combination of, a, of an ebook and your book. Or you could think about a gift certificate. Maybe there's a, maybe um, I have someone who is doing a getting ready to set up her area. There's this wonderful, fabulous, she writes women's fiction, a tea. I will fly to your city and I will do a tea for $2,500. All right, and and do a tea. Um, and you're gonna, you know, I'll, I'll be there for your tea, and we'll have books, and we'll have a grand time. Uh, there may be a private event hosted by the author. As I, I just shared an example of a couple things that I could do with me. Or here's what I love to do: is for fiction. How about naming them as a character in the book? Okay, so I love, I is, love that. I love that. I do too. So, but but there's a difference. If you want to be a good guy. Okay, $1,000 for a good guy, but if you want to be naughty, it's $2,000. It's got to be the villain. It's be $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> yes, villain, you know, if you want to be the person who's shot at the opening scene, okay. So, and, and also think about these things of going to uh, places that you service, like restaurants and stuff. Why don't you make them a character in your book if, you can do, if it works around in that? Um, and doing that, and you can put it in and put a price tag on it, all right? This is not the place to be shy. That's what I want to say. Here's Ashley. Ashley woke up. She was trying to raise $8,600 and 87 I can't remember the amount, but we, we raised $9,600. We went from $6,800 to $9,600 in 72 hours, where a couple of us got behind to really push, and by the way, she went back to all her donors and said, okay, we're almost there. I'm exhausted. I need some help. Here's what's going on. And that I I would encourage all of you to take a peek at Ashley's site and you go to Kickstarter. You can search, and and one of your homework assignments would be to go to all the sites I mentioned, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, Publicizer, and search successful projects. Because And watch what they do. Watch the, the component as it lays out. Never underrate success and what they do. Mimic it. Mimic it. For Ashley, 
um, she went back out to everyone, and she used, uh, and, and she called for help. So between all of us, we were able to, hooray, and it's Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-E-B-R-A-T-T-O-N, Ashley Bratton. Um, we were able to put it all together. So we had the pitch video. We had all the content. We had the bio. We did the written pitch that went on on the page. It uh, went into small image, diff rewards perks. The time limit was 30 days. That's the best. We had live links. We, we absolutely reached out to all our family and friends, and we recorded what was going happening. So Instagram, and those of you who are Instagram people, so this is the perfect time to shoot things out and get it going and let people know live action. Here's it going. Put it on your Facebook. Put it all out and let people know so they can share in your enthusiasm, which makes it so exciting. Now, things I wanted to say about your video very quickly, short, less than two minutes. If you can do one minute, even better. Uh, it gives it a sneak peek into the project. If you can have a little music, that would be lovely. Uh, remember, visual, visual, visual. That's why you add those images. Ashley uh, is uh, on Kickstarter. was really a good example. She used a lot of images. She's actually a photographer, and one of her, her deals, she had, I think, two takers for $1,500. I will do an author photo shoot and give you a weekend at a bed and breakfast in Colorado. Now, her folks own the bed and breakfast. That was nice. Um, but that she did that, and people gobbled that one up. Call out, invite in, and make sure this is must, it, this is critical. Tell people what you're going to do with their money, and then don't leave them hanging. Call for their action. Tell them if you love what I'm doing, I'd be honored to have you support me. Please pledge. All right. So that's your pitch video, your written video is you're going to key in information first, or your key information on what the project is. Know your story, why you want the money, give a little bit about something about you. Your old deal is about building trust and revealing what you're going to do. You want to make sure you please proofread it. Please proofread it. Uh, use headings and subtitles in it, subheadings in here. Insert those images. As you go along, have a call to action. And also, here's something else I would suggest. Do an add-on. If you go over budget, let's say, you know, I'm seeking $8,000 for my project, but, but if many of you support me, here's what else I will do with the money. Don't tell them you're going to Mexico to drink Coronas. Please don't do that. Although you'd like to, I get it. But um, what you want to do is tell them that you will be available. Um, and, and you're going to do these other things, maybe marketing, publicity, whatever. Uh, maybe you'll have a, a, a top-notch illustrator come in for your book. All right, your perks, make sure your value matches. You want to have, if there's urgency limited as a collector, add that. 60% of your, your supporters will be between the $25 and $100 mark. If you can, if, you're, if your uh, platform will allow you to have image to the rewards, I would certainly do that. If you have a reward that no one seems to be sniffing around or supporting, yank it off and replace it with another. Most of the platforms have a limited amount of rewards that you can put up, so you want to have a little extra in there. And when I was saying uh, create stress rewards, that's what you do when you go over budget. Or you can say you may have one that sells out. You can add another one. If you've already donated this amount, if you put more in, I'll add this little goodie to you. Uh, for the amount. You link to all social media platforms. Make sure that it's on your website. Make sure that it's a signature on your email. And for heaven's sakes, get it on your profile pages on your social media in that. And then record what's happening. So I've mentioned that uh, as we've gone along, you know, what's in there, your events relating to your campaign, uh, certainly on your website. Do a blog. Get your blogs going every day, something new. You're thinking about doing a 30-day blog here. This is the time to do it. it does, we're not talking about hundreds and hundreds of words. Just putting it in. Don't, and you don't write it like you're exhausted in Eeyore. What we want to do is just enthusiastically because this is what's going to really support it and bring it into play. And then look over your social media checklist. And we really extensively in our crowdfunding guide, we've got it in here. 
for your tweeting, your Facebook. Pinterest is also really a good resource here for you. Make sure you ask for those retweets, retweets and your shares. Don't be shy and make sure that you use your hashtags in there. Now this momentum and final push is really critical. So add new perks on. How about creating a referral contest for, for everyone who's already in? Hey, if you've already said thank you for supporting me, if you refer anyone to it and, and you make a special link for that and they come in and support it, here's what I'm going to do for you. And you have it. And then again, here's our key sites, Indiegogo.com, Kickstarter.com, Publicizer, and that's with a Z, dot com. And then we have at the end, thank everyone. Mm, send them kisses. Uh, meet your deadlines to get those rewards out. They will, you will say and post when I'm going to get the reward out, when, by the way, when you, you put it in, when the book will be ready. You've got deadlines now going in. Make sure you update your contributors, invite them to go to your blog and new later, and certainly invite them to all events. And then when it's over, <sighs> what worked? What didn't? Bouquets to everyone that helped you. This is your resources in your team. And then certainly, you know, huge kudos to you. And celebrate with a personal reward. You certainly want to do that. Um, so it could be, you know, uh, Cancun with Coronas, <laughs> whatever it is for you. <laughs> all right, so. <laughs> or or it, it, for me, it's a cruise. But so essentials for crowdfunding success. Just to recap, video, content, bio, gifts, rewards, perks, family and friends, essential. Uh, social media, your time limit, and how you're con going to communicate. And then you got to have the Goit factor here. So the Goit factor is this. Get off your tush, and you, it's got to really come in and grill in for where you are. And then just one kind of little goose for me, you've got to look at the commitment. What's commitment got to do with your authoring success? It's, it's just one single word. It's everything. If you're not committed, this baby is not going to work, I promise you. So a cheat sheet, and this is, in, by the way, the back of our book with the more intensive detail, don't rush into your campaign. you got to plan it. Learn some of the rules. Each of the sites have their own rules. Study and learn, as I suggested earlier, from other successful campaigns. The shorter that 30-day is better than longer. Have a realistic funding goal. And make sure that your pitch is perfect. I'm talking your video as it goes out here. Very essential habit. Your rewards that they tie in to who and what you are, and they're not namby-pamby or essential. Family and friends, must, 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 must. Start building your list. Uh, your list. That's about that gathering of all those emails and names now. And make sure that there's a call to action plan as you go forward. And my final little keeper here is don't do well what you have no business doing. If you need help here, you don't need to earn your Ph.D. in crowdfunding. There are people like myself that can help you out. So here's the book we're going to recommend you get, and I know that Robin and her fabulous team will be sending out something to you so you can get it at a little discount or something along that line. And that lastly, I'd love to connect with you. This is how to get a hold of me before we open up these lines for any questions um, that we might have. That my phone number is 303. I'm based in the Denver area, 885-2207. And then uh, that I talk, I communicate with people on publishing on Skype. I'd love to have you follow my Twitter feed, which is my book shepherd. And please, please join the publishing group on the uh, on Facebook, and it's the publishing with the book shepherd, as well as on Author You uh, with LinkedIn, the Author You group. And I think Robin. That we've got it. So we came in under our timeline. How do you like that one? Hey, uh, Judith, how, your radio show, how do, um, because I've been a guest on it, how do people find you and find that? I've had people ask. Thank you for asking that. Um, the radio show is called Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing, and you can find it on a couple of, the, I'm going to give you multiple places to go. One, iTunes. And it, it, how, although I get challenged with iTunes, but I can also send you the link to that 
we want to send it out to everyone. But iTunes, you can pick it up there. You can go to the parent station, which is Toginet, T-O-G-I-N-E-T, toginet.com, and look up the show on there. And we have a, a, a show tonight, which is all about uh, uh, how to create the buzz, building the buzz, and really planting the reviews. And you can also go to either the authoru.org website or the bookshepherd.com website, and right on the homepage, if you click on On the Air icon, bang, you will have 300 shows open up to you to pick from. <laughs> 